Sterling, research on the Towering Inferno, research in Poseidon Adventure. What amount of research do you have to do to know? Well, in to take Towering, let's say. That, that was the most extensive. Um, the Poseidon Adventure, after all, had, was a, a very well-crafted novel by a really superb writer, Paul Gallico. Paul had really done the research in the book, and it was a question not so much of research in that instance, because the situation was what it was. was you had to accept the fiction that a, a, a steamer had turned upside down and was still afloat with its and stern. Poseidon, yeah. You know, uh, there's not a lot of research you can do. In the first place, you can say, well, that's ridiculous, it would sink, or no, maybe it wouldn't sink, then how long would it float? Uh, that was a case of using your imagination, given how many decks there were and what the situations were aboard. Since sailing in, in the sea, this is why I'm here, are my primary source of interest in life, even more than writing, uh, anything about ships or boats, uh, I don't have to do any research. It's part of my texture. You sail anyway, don't yeah, you? Yeah, I do. So that was cool. Now, Towering Inferno was a different animal because I knew absolutely nothing about fire in high-rise buildings, uh, how they were fought, what the precautions were. I met with a lot of fire departments, did a lot of research, went to a lot of buildings, was appalled to find that it was certain depth. There was nothing the fire department can do above certain floors. And I was told, don't go higher than the fourth floor in any hotel. Don't sleep higher than that. When I met with the fire department people in three cities, we met downstairs in a basement for, for lunch each time under a fire sprinkler. And Are you serious? I'm very serious. Oh. And I, I, these were all chiefs. And I said, how come we're always here? They said, I like it below ground better, every, every, every instance. And I said, would you stay in a hotel on the 80th floor or something? They said, no way. We never go above the third or fourth floor. Never? Never. They said, we don't go any higher than we can jump and, and hope to live. You could live in the third level. Uh, you could, two, if yeah. you were lucky or yeah. you yeah. used a sheet or do a little climbing, you yeah. might get by. Yeah. But when you're up higher, there's no way to get out. You can't break the windows with the air conditioning. And there's no way you're going to get down. How are you going to get up to the roof and be off-lifted with a helicopter in a 50-knot wind? And where are the helicopters? How are they going to land? What about all the other people in the building? Are you in condition? Am I in condition after a heavy lunch or dinner to walk up 40 flights of stairs with crowded people fighting to get up to the top? I don't think so. Cardiac arrest time. Yeah. So all these plans that these buildings had, when you really examine them, were very alarming. And um, a lot of buildings have sprinkler systems which are not even connected. Now, we, we yeah. exposed all that. We also Great. exposed in our film what happens when furniture burns, mm -hmm. kinds of noxious gases. Um, I think the film was very effective in causing many cities in the country to enforce the laws on the books, which had been just kind of relaxed. Shortly after the film came out, we were attacked by the Builders Association, by architects, groups. Um, and then about a month after that, three fires hit. MGM Grand? Well, it was before that. Oh. But right after, as our film was out, and people began to die in high-rise high buildings, and all the criticism stopped. And then the laws changed.